Welcome back. Thank you so much for tuning in. It's been an amazing show. It's been an incredible week. We have brought some pretty heavy and pretty dark subject matters over the last couple of days. And this, for me as a parent, is going to be a very tough discussion, but it, it really does highlight the incredible work that people in the space are doing. But let's get right to it. Parental abandonment, um, otherwise referred to as child abandonment, is a severe form of child neglect and abuse occurring in circumstances where parents withhold care from their children, which is in many cases resulting in children being left alone to struggle for their own survival. Today, to chat to us a little bit more about this is um, an incredible human being, a social worker from the Western Cape Adoption Coalition, Cindy Lee van Andel. Hi. Cindy Lee, um, I think we're going to open a lot of eyes with this and, and hopefully shock a lot of people into action, um, but also just into a state of empathy for what adoptive parents are going through, what social workers in the space are going through, but most importantly, to what a ridiculous amount of children are being subject to because of, I would imagine, socioeconomic drivers must be the, the main cause, but let's get to the heart of it first. I've given the official definition yes. of what child abandonment is, but in a broader context, what is child um, abandonment? So according to the Children's Act, child abandonment is a form of neglect and also abuse. Um, it's referred to when a parent deliberately deserts their child and withholds care and a re in relationship with them. And the Children's Act is very clear. It says for a period of three months. So technically that's the legal definition, but the abandonment that we've currently been seeing and that's you know flooding media is what we term unsafe abandonment, where you're hearing about babies dropped in bags, in bins, stormwater drains. In 2018, there was a quick search done. It was just over 28 cases that were reported. Mm. And those are the ones that made it to the media. It's such a complex thing because, I mean, you always, the immediate knee jerk reaction, you want to blame. You just want to yeah. blame someone. You want to blame that parent. How could you, especially as a new parent? I just want to, I'm filled with so much rage right <laughs> now as we are talking. Like, I, I can't explain it, but I've also tasted very dark times where I, you, you begin to question your own yeah, your moral core and your ability as a parent. And, and this is what so many, especially young parents and, and mothers, are, are going through. But what do you think the, the, the statistics really are? What is your honest, your gut feel? How many newborn and young babies are being abandoned maybe every day or every month in, in South Africa? Is, okay, can so you put a number to it? Our most recent statistics comes from a medical research council research and they reported 3,500 children are abandoned every year. Of that 65% are newborns or children, babies, infants and 95% 95 of them are under the age of one. Um, this study also revealed that South African or well, children born in South Africa are at most at risk within the first six days to be murdered. I mentioned socio-economic um, what, 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 what is driving this? What, what is driving is the this? Reasons why parents or traditionally the, the, the blame, if I can put it that way, it's falls on the mother. The mother. Yeah. Because people question, how can a woman carry a child for nine months and, and then just Fight the abandoned? strongest physical connection in, in nature. Yeah. Well, that, that's debatable. We had a psychologist do a presentation for us and she says, maternal instinct is the urge not to kill. So hmm. I think what these women or even... I term families and parents. Very often the pregnancy is concealed from family. There's a lack of social support from the partner, the family. Um, they don't access antenatal care. They're scared. Socioeconomic status, um, poverty. It could have been that the child was conceived in violent nature, Abuse, rape or incest. Yeah. So people are scared to report. They don't <laughs> know where to go. And, and the rape and incest statistics are almost as alarmingly high as the exactly. abandonment statistics. Exactly. So there is a link. Yes. And it's a, don't paint it with one brush. Or don't judge yeah. because you have a safe you know, place yeah. to, to be able to view this situation because it is so unbelievably complex. When we talk about the crisis, pregnancies and families who are faced with these, and I'll try to term it as families from now on mm -hmm. and not say mothers, yeah. um, what options are available? Well, traditionally you... When you discover you're pregnant, you'd want to go for antenatal care. So your first port of call would be your community health centre, hospital or doctor. What we find is most women are not accessing these services. So moms are the services not accessible? or are They, they are not accessible, but I think there's, there's a stigma. Mm. Women are being shamed into keeping their children, regardless of their circumstances. So in most cases, what we find is yeah. the mom is the one approaching us for assistance and the dad is absent. So the women feel deserted, they feel abandoned, 
and they just feel hopeless. They're, and they also feel judged, as you said, by professionals in some cases, um, to access resources and, and come and discuss what their options are. What can they do if I'm unable to keep my child? There are different options that we can explore. We provide them with counselling in order to give them these options, but also emotional support and psychological support, because I think that is where the biggest battle rages for them. Um, is there such a thing as a, a safe abandonment? We've heard about shelters yes. and, and places like the Hole in the Wall yes. and organisations like that. How safe that abandonment has become a thing, if I can put it that <laughs> way. Um, in South Africa, safe abandonment is currently still illegal. We have no laws providing for safe abandonment. Do you want that to change? Um, we do. There's a great movement towards that, but there's a whole lot of things that need to happen. We currently first need to get an actual current statistic of what is happening. Um, we also need to increase our resources available to these families. Safe abandonment should be the last resort available to women, but it is the ideal in you know, preserving a life instead of finding that baby in a stormwater drain. I'll let that sink in. Um, we are going to continue talking about ultimately what needs to be done to be able to move forward as a society because I have a feeling the triggers within this conversation are not at the point where you step in mm. to help to rehome or, or find mm. a new family for that baby, but they start way before that. We'll continue this. Thank you so much. Thank you so, Pleasure. so much. It's my feel good I have to admit that normally that gorgeous sound of a baby laughing um, is the best part of my week, in fact, on Expresso. But today it's becoming a gut check moment where I'm being forced to think about myself as a parent and my role as a South African and what I can do for my fellow human beings. We love to, to paint Mandela Day as the one opportunity where we give our 67 um, minutes. But I think Tata Mandiba right now would be saying, shame on us, all of us, yeah. um, in every facet of life because child abandonment is, has reached, gone far beyond what could even be remotely acceptable. Yeah. Nearly 3,000 children are abandoned every year. Of those, how many children pass Sorry. away and how many survive? Uh, on average, if there are three children abandoned, of the three, one will survive. Only one. How do you, how do, you do the work that you do? How, how are you able to do this? I watch Grey's Anatomy and cry a lot. <laughs> um, I think it's important to, the child is the center. Um, you have to be passionate about what you're doing. It has to be best interest of the child at all times. Um, so even in discussing things like safe abandonment, yes, it can save a life, but there's also the debate around, we're giving the mom anonymity because she's not able to be prosecuted, but this child is left without an identity, without heritage, without medical background family ties, what if the family, even if it's a far away, away aunt, could have taken this child in and he could have grown up in his own community. And this is obviously the one major stumbling block when it comes to uh, future adoptions yes. because we've got so many parents who are sitting, pulling out their hair, crying, saying yeah. we are ready to adopt. But th it's that very, the, the semantics and the legalities around that, that, there is a way that we need to approach this and everyone has a valid argument. What needs to change? I know we are stepping into a legal, a, a governmental it space does here, get hairy. That, um, that you might not necessarily have the platform right now to be able yeah. to speak about, and that's something that we can touch on again, but how, how do we change this? What needs to happen? Um, I think at a grassroots level, we need to empower our communities, our moms, our families, as to what resources are accessible. Um, I think we also need to increase our resources, educate, empower, um, provide as much information as possible. Obviously, there is also legislative changes that need to take place. And the, the, I mean, there's amazing projects that are being run. Um, the Courage Child Protection Program by Dee Blackie, she's the global founder of that. We've got Robin Wilson Forster, amazing articles highlighting the plight of what's actually happening. Um, they've proposed staged processes that might, might eventually lead up to safe abandonment being decriminalized. But there's a lot of work that we need to do before that. So if everybody can get engaged, if I look at the Courage Child Protection Program, it involves communities. They've got this amazing toolkit that, you know, it maps out your community and physically you can point out and train your community members and, and, and moms at, at, at hospitals and, and clinics and tell them, look, this is where you can go. Critical Access, phases yeah, in that right story. in the beginning and say, reach out to a social worker. If your clinic or hospital social worker is not able to assist you, she will refer you. Um, we've got the National Adoption Coalition that's got a cri these crisis pregnancy 
these, they, you can contact them. They've got hotline numbers. If you are in a remote area or even in an area where you're not sure where to access services, they will refer. We all network together. We're one big family. Um, well, it takes a village. Yes, so it does. It takes a village. I, a long while ago, living in this, this amazing country of ours where the price that we pay for having some of the freedoms that mm -hmm. we do have and being able to be a part of this amazing narrative is that we have to go through things. And yes, I too have even gone through things mm -hmm. as, a, as a privileged white, white male. Everyone has had something. It's all yes. relative. I stopped looking at South Africans as victims, but rather as survivors, yes. as incredibly strong individuals. And there is nothing more powerful than the, the will to live. Do you have any success stories? Because there must be moments that, that refill your cup in some way. There are. There are. There's one that's quite close to my heart. Um, it was actually my first case of abandonment. Um, as a social worker, when you're typing a report and you get to information on biological parents or you're registering the birth and it's just unknown, 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 you think about what this child is going to to wonder and the questions they're going to ask. Um, even the circumstances that he was abandoned in, he should have died. He literally should have died. But this little one, he was premature. He fought. He survived. And I mean, now he's, he's grown into this perfect little boy. He's healthy developmental milestones are on par and I feel so honored and privileged to be part of his life and help shape his journey going forward. Um, and my role as social worker is to constantly try and trace and find any information that he might need one day for his life and find him a forever family where he's gonna be happy and blessed. And hopefully he will know how strong he actually is. He's a miracle. <laughs> um, he really is a miracle and these are the kind of stories that are emerging every day in South Africa. You're a bit of a miracle worker then. If you have Don't to kind of put, <laughs> um, put two and two together, I know you're part of a very big network. Yes. You're fighting a battle on many, many fronts. If you're in government, if you're in politics, if you're in media, if you're a community leader, if you're a matriarch or a patriarch within your family, we all have a role to play to set the tone for young mothers to feel unjudged, to feel that there is a resource available, an option, we call it crisis because they are in crisis in that moment. But ultimately, all of us are the parents of these children that have been abandoned. So we have something to do. I know you're off to, to court to yes. continue doing <laughs> that today. You're going to look awesome in court thank today. You. You're going to crush it. You're going to absolutely crush it. Cindy, thank you so much. This has oh, been, been intense, pleasure. but, but really, so really wonderful. Thank you.